Hello everyone and welcome back to Team Fortress 2. Uh, we're finally looking at our final class, the Spy. Um, we're having a few technical difficulties, it's telling me I lost connection to the item server, but I do still have all my items it seems like, so uh, we'll just continue on. The basic kit for a Spy is a uh, basic revolver, his knife, and the Invisiwatch. You also have the disguise kit, which if you hit 4 or scroll down to it... Um, hello? Oh, this is showing me with items I do not have equipped. There we go, basic one. Oh, and the Electro Sapper, which actually is not something you can change, but, uh, uh, you've seen a bit of what that did in the Engineer, but I'll show it in a bit. So yeah, if you scroll down, Beyond the Knife, Disguise Kit, which, uh, damn it, cannot taunt with it. Anyway, if you go to the Disguise Kit, you can hit 1 through 3, 4 through 6, 7 through 9, and, uh, choose your class, or if you have the Concise Menu on, 1 through 3 for uh, offense, defense, and support, and then 1 through 3 for which of the classes you've chosen. Um, that seemed a bit longer than I needed it to go, since I can fairly easily hit the buttons I need to. Um, I'll explain the pros and cons of each disguise in a bit. For now, uh, let me just go to random disguise and show what spies are best at. Hey guy. No! Well, I almost failed completely in showing what spies are best at. There, okay. I did. I failed completely at showing what spies are best at. <laughs> spies are typically best at removing high priority targets and uh, breaking through uh, engineer nests, which is what it's called when an engineer has all, all of their stuff in a small bundle around them. Um, they do that through two main things, the ability to look like the engineer's team, and the ability to be invisible. Also, I guess the ability to insta-kill them if they get a right hit, but uh, yeah, the other two are more important. You uh, become invisible by right-clicking. With the basic invisible watch, it just slowly takes down, you have about 15 seconds, I think, of invisibility. During this time, you can disguise and move around as normal, but you cannot attack. And when your invisibility wears off, you fade back into existence, and you're there. Worth it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying way too much and not showing what I need to show. Um, when you are able to backstab an enemy, actually, I'll show. <laughs> okay, I'll show that when I get there. Uh, invisibility. The basic invisibility watch is nice because it's very quiet. All other invisibility watches are slightly louder and can be heard by most other enemies as uh, you decloak. Which means that if you try to decloak behind an engineer and backstab them, they'll hear you spin around and hit you with their wrench. So you gotta watch out for that. Uh, let me disguise again. Move in here, and I'll show, as I uh, was shown in the engineer video, that sentries will completely ignore you when you're disguised. Most other players will know it's you because I'm disguised as it's not a tumor, and it's not a tumor standing right there. Say hi, Rich. Hi. <laughs> uh, but you can fool things like sentries. Also bots. Bots don't seem to like spies very much except when you've killed someone. Okay, so let me show with the backstab. With all the... Uh, oh yeah, and watch out if the engineer has a wrangler. Anyway, with all knives, if you get behind someone or close enough to being behind someone, your knife... I just need to get behind you to show right I'm actually going to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, inch to the certain point. There we go. The knife will be raised up like this, and if you click, it's brought down and it stabs them. It is possible to have a split second of availability in which you backstab someone because a person's back is actually about a 180 degree, uh, pretty much a semicircle, from a specific point in their back, which means it is possible to uh, do what's called face stabbing, where I'm right here, I can sort of look around them and get their back from the front. It's weird and glitchy, but it works, sort of. And it doesn't happen often enough that it seems broken. Um, to sap things, you just go up, left click. It will show you that a, sa a sapper is going no! to be placed. No! <laughs> Not my baby! If uh, you don't think you're fast enough to sap, switch to knife, backstab, or do the other way around, what often works is just keep sapping. Ow! <laughs> no! You I do 
you do have to be careful, of course. Uh, the w reason that usually works is because uh, removing the sapper and repairing the damage done to the sentry are two different uh, whacks of the wrench. So if you're fast enough and other people are not around, you can keep placing sappers until the thing explodes. Uh, but you have to be uh, on the move in case the uh, engineer decides to come smack you instead and then get your sapper, as you previously saw. Um, what you can also do is sap it, shoot it a few times with your revolver, and then go on with your day. Getting a bit of lag here. God, you No! <laughs> ah! Damn it! I am not doing well. I'm usually a very good spy. Yeah, he is a very good spy. Thank you, Rachel. It's not your spy day, I it's guess. It's not Well, see, usually there are other distractions. Spy in one-on-one -on -one is useless on your, unless you're both spies and you're doing some sort of revolver duel. Um, before I get on to the unlockable items, let me go over the different classes you can disguise as. Uh, scout is not a good choice to disguise as. If, if you want to fly under the radar and just need to get from point A to point B without being shot by sentries, scout is an option. However, you'll notice I'm not moving as quickly as a scout does. And people will notice that. The footprint sounds are slower, or the footstep sounds. Um, you're not double jumping constantly. Usually just jumping is enough for some people, but still, it's very, uh, very suspicious. Soldier is a slightly better choice because you don't often see soldiers running around just firing rockets at random. And uh, it does slow you down automatically to soldier speed, so that's not an issue. But even then, soldiers will often get checked as spies, just in case. Uh, pyro is definitely not a good choice, because honestly, pyros should always be blowing flames if they think there might be a spy around. So if someone sees a pyro walking by them and just going, hey, and continuing walking like nothing's wrong, they aren't doing their jobs and should be shot anyway, and if they happen to be a spy, that's even better. Uh, demo men work? The problem with demo men is that they do move slower than everyone else, which means it's a pain to catch up to people. Uh, most people don't expect a demo man to be a spy, so it's good if you're in an area like this, and there's a sentry gun right there, and there's a person sitting there, and maybe a, uh, or a heavy <gasps> and his medic over there. No, Rach, I'm, I'm, I'm just pointing at random points in my own. Okay, spot. good. <laughs> uh, if there's like a heavy and a medic who will be a little slower than you, even, or things like that, yeah, it is a decent choice, but not always the best. Uh, heavies. Heavy is an okay choice in that you are medic fodder. Medics will flock to you and not think a thing about you wandering around calling for medic constantly. Which, by the way, is very, uh, very noticeable. People who call for medic more than once or twice will usually be shot just in case they're a spy trying to fish for an achievement. So be careful with that. Uh, otherwise, medics will flock around you and often go to, go to work looking for other spies, in which case you can wait for them to heal you, spin around, and pfft, done. Very easy. Engineers are a prime thing to disguise as as a spy if you're going after other engineers and you know there's more than one on a team, because it's quite it's uh, quite common to see two engineers working together, one running off to do something while the other stays to protect the nest. Which means you can walk in there and trick the engineer into leaving, or at least into turning his back while he repairs things. However, as soon as you boom hit that. They're going to know that you're on the other side and start shooting you, so work quickly. Now, let's see what to do here. No! I worth it! Babe. Worth yeah. it! Totally worth it! Uh, okay. Uh, the next choice up, which I can't look at the menu right now, is... Uh, medic. Now, disguising as a medic works in that people will run to you and immediately turn their backs to you, hoping that you will just follow along behind them, uh, like, get a medic, follow along behind you, or er, them, and that's the perfect opportunity to just run up and backstab, especially since it's most often soldiers, demo men, and heavy, the people who are slightly slower than you, and you can catch up to them anyway. The problem with this is that anyone who's paying attention will notice that the little your healer's name is blah thing doesn't pop up on their screen. Um... I believe I showed that in my first ever, like, the basics video. There is a thing that pops up and shows you who your healer is. So if that doesn't pop up quickly enough, or if other people don't see that little healing stream going to someone, because a medic should always be healing whoever's close to him, closest to him, 
at least to give him a bit of overheal. Uh, that will be suspicious and they'll shoot you. It works, but it's a limited time offer for that. So if you don't backstab someone quickly and get the hell out, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be shot at. Disguising as snipers works in one capacity. If you're going for other snipers, come up here, and if you don't see any, crouch right here and inch your way out, or stand here and just kind of whoa. Whoa. It's not a perfect disguise because you're not looking down the scope, but it looks like you might be checking for opponent, uh, opposing sp uh, snipers. So then they'll come up and go, oh, another sniper, okay, and they'll stand right here. And then you can just kind of circle around, backstab, and move on your way. Not a foolproof system, but it works from time to time. Also, people will often see uh, snipers coming up and running through here. If they've fallen off or chased an opponent who had gotten up on their balcony, something like that, they'll run back up. So that's not out of the question either. Finally, disguising as a spy... Oh, hang on. Uh, I hit zero, that's random. Disguising as a spy is tricky. It works, and I know it is possible to actually disguise as a spy, disguised as someone else. Uh, very Inception there, despite that. Uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it is possible to do that. However, I'm not sure if it is an automatic thing or if it just kind if there's a button to do it I've never been able to actually verify that so uh, do some research I probably will later but um, I doubt I'll add it to this video uh, also attacking instantly takes up your disguise in case that wasn't obvious also the uh, spy revolver is crap Accur accuracy wise accuracy wise it does good damage but it's not very accurate um, let's see here Oh, you gotta show the razor back. Like, what you could do. Oh, sure, I can show what that looks like. Okay. To the other side, so if you go sniper, I'll head over there. You don't need anything else with the engineer ranks. No, I yeah, I've shown all I can with that. Okay. So, uh, head over here and show how the razor back looks. And also, I can show Jurati if you want to throw that. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, your main... Uh, worry as a spy is a pyro always never get anywhere near pyros if you can possibly help it or unless you know they're not good enough to catch you before you backstab them because spyro flame or er, spyro god I played too many <laughs> games I'm slurring too much uh, you don't have your razorback on right now by the way oh, I don't you did no you did oh. that's what happens when you hit a razorback it explodes off of them your hand is kind of stuck in an upward fashion and uh, it makes that loud noise and then they turn on you and good luck escaping Unless they run away to get a new Razorback. Jerks. <laughs> Ow! You're so mean. Ah! Come around the corner, Rachel. Oh! Got me. Alright. Um, so yeah, so watch out for pyros. And uh, watch out for snipers with uh, Razorbacks. Either ignore them entirely, because that's just going to be a big hassle, or if you can, shoot them. But, as you can see, it takes quite a few shots, uh, unless you are specifically prepared to do that. Uh, which is actually what I'm going to show right now, how to be prepared to take out snipers quickly and efficiently. Uh, so let me, actually, just shoot, or er, Jurati me and then hit me, so let me come back up there. In the hip? No, Jurati me and then hit me. Oh! Not Jurati <laughs> like, me in the hip. <laughs> like, why does it matter where I hit you? Alright, okay. I'm, ri I'm right outside your uh, resupply. I came through out. I came out through. <laughs> I came out through the other. Door. We are a family of horrible communicators. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This is what happens when you're Jurati, and even if you do, if you go invisible, <gasps> I am visible as a dripping yellow silhouette. Oh, sorry, I, for I forgot it killed you. No, that's good. I, I need to change my stuff. Okay. Another thing I forgot to mention is, while invisible, if you bump into someone, if you touch them, you will flicker into, an, into visibility for a moment. And also, they may notice that they can't move where they wanted to move. So, try to avoid touching people while invisible if you can help it. Alright, let's go to items. Uh, the achievement uh, revolver is the ambassador. The achievement knife is... There isn't one. They got two not, uh, watches. You have the cloak and dagger, which has a plus 100% regenerate only while you're standing still. So you'll bring it up, and you can uh, move around. You'll see it slowly drains. It actually drains much faster than the regular watch. But if you stop moving, it ever slow, so slowly recharges. And you can actually uh, 
kind of work it. If you crouch and walk, it goes down much slower than usual, and you can you can pretty much go across the entire map cloaked if you uh, work the cloak and dagger correctly. However, when it runs out, you don't immediately decloak. What happens is you flicker into invisibility, just like if you touch someone. So you got to watch out for that. I love making Rachel nervous. Oh! Oh, very nice! Oh, I was gonna show off what the gun did, Rachel. <laughs> Sorry. It was a nice throw, though. Thank you. Ah, I got a teammate, too. I didn't know you hadn't already had that one. Oh. Okay, so when I respawn, I will show you... Uh, actually, I can... Now that you've seen the cloak and dagger. Very, very simple. I will show you the dead ringer as well. So, uh, come back to the battlements, Rachel. Oh, okay. When you right click with the dead ringer, you don't actually cloak. What you do is you bring out the watch. Like this. Now shoot me. If you are shot or injured in any way while you have the watch out, you drop a corpse, you scream, they get a little bonus for whatever it is they do when they kill people, and uh, everyone in the world sees that they've apparently died. Except I think maybe your people on your team. However, then you cloak, can run away, and you decloak, making that really loud noise. That thing is... You can hear that from about a, the, half the level away. It's ridiculous. So you want to get out of there as quickly as possible. It is quite hard to uh, rebound and backstab the person who just killed you unless they're in the middle of taunting. Now, the ambassador can get headshots. And it is the most efficient way to finish off a sniper who has a Razorback at close range. You can headshot them once and then just finish them off with a shot anywhere else in their body and they'll go down. Uh, however, what is it? It does a little less damage, and it does fire much slower than most other weapons, uh, most other revolvers. Um, so that's those. And now I will switch to, uh, let's see, La Changere, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I only took one year of French. Um, less damage, but you gain cloak back on a hit. It's good for if you're using, uh, the Dead Ringer, which relies on you having a full bar of cloak before you can use it again or if you just use your cloak a lot. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but it works. And the Diamondback, which actually I will need you to go engineer again for, Rachel. Oh, okay. And the Cloak of Dagger, and then uh, Big Earner, you have less health, but uh, it works a bit like the La Changer in that you get, or La Changer, I guess, in that you get cloak back when you stab people with it. Or kill, I think, either way. Okay, are you back there an engineer? Not yet. Okay. Now this is your eternal reward. With this item, you are actually not able to disguise. As you can see here, I'm hitting uh, four. It doesn't like me. Uh, don't build a t sentry, please, Rage. Okay. This right. is most useful uh, against anything else other than an engineer, pretty much. In that uh, you can't disguise, so engineers are going to get you pretty quickly. Uh, what it does do, however, is against other classes... <laughs> Their body disappears, they don't scream, and now you are automatically disguised as them. If you do manage to get someone and then go get an engineer, the transition from whatever you were disguised as first to the engineer will not alert the uh, sentry to your position unless you're standing directly in front of where it's pointing. It has a split second where it could open fire on you, but it's not very often. And uh, from this point, you can then move on and do whatever hi, it is buddy. you do. Oh, hi. I hate you. Ah. Uh, but yeah, it's fun, but it's very hard to use effectively for me. I have gone on some pretty awesome sprees with the thing, but it's you got to start it, which is the hard part. Once you have backstabbed someone, you can usually move on and get a few other people before you take them down. The Razorback, on the other hand, I'll need to actually come and uh, sap that rage. Oh. Yeah, sorry. The Razorback, is that what it's called? Yeah, is uh, a bit like the Ambassador in that it does a special, or actually it's a bit like, um, what is it that gets, it's a bit like the uh, Frontier Justice. In fact, you actually need a Frontier Justice to craft one like I did. Uh, and what it does is when you, what? What did you do, Rach? Oh, sorry, I changed weapons. <sighs> okay, build something real fast. Doesn't matter what, Rach, just build okay. it. There. Okay, so now that I have sapped something and it is blown up, it doesn't matter if your sapper destroys it or if it just blows up while your sapper's on it, but you get a free critical hit. 
Which does the same amount of damage from close range as a headshot with the uh, ambassador. So if you can run through and sap an engineer's entire uh, nest and rack up, say, three, four crits, and then chase them down, you can actually wreak some pretty major havoc with your gun, then just slip into the shadows and you were never there. So very good for taking out engineers and their nests and a few people who are close by and unlucky enough to run into you. Um, and their nests. <laughs> yes. Engineers are birds. In case, you did, in case you didn't know that. They lay their little engineer eggs. Oh my god. And, and the chicks are born with hard hats. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe you went there. <sighs> okay. Um, oh, you aren't supposed to have those upside down. You gotta, you gotta put them open end up. Anyway, I believe that's pretty much all there is to the spy. I don't know if I've really covered much because it, it kind of requires more people to show off how to act. I guess I'll, I'll do what I can. You want to act as much like the opponent as possible. If they suspect you and fire on you, don't try to run away. Go exactly where you were going before they started firing on you and hope to god you survive their onslaught. Most people will only fire once or twice to make sure that you aren't a, a spy, which actually is not enough to kill you if they don't fire correctly. So you can be running along, say blah 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 blah, and you're coming across here, and uh, there's an engineer over there, and he goes, that guy might be a spy. Ow, Rach, I'm proving a point here, don't shoot me. Sorry. And he's, and he's uh, like, that guy might be a spy, and so you're running over here, and he shoots you with a shotgun, and you go, ah. Don't immediately go, oh my god, and try to get away from the engineer. Go where you were going before, take the long way around. Be casual, as casual as you can. If a pyro is coming towards you with fire, you obviously want to get away. But what you want to kind of try to do is avoid the fire without necessarily running away. At that point, it might be good to break cover and run, because pyros are really dangerous. But otherwise, try to stick it out. Don't let yourself get lit on fire, obviously, because that just means you're a spy. And don't run into people, because that also means you're a spy. Jerk. <laughs> I'm going to gut you like a Cornish game head. Ah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> so. Oh. Also, try yeah, try to be in the places where whoever you're disguised as would be. If you're disguised as a pyro or a heavy, coming down here works because they oftentimes will come and try to defend the uh, intel. Same with the engineer, but don't go where the engineer you're disguised as is if you can possibly help it. Also, this isn't something you can control, but you'll want to avoid people who have recently seen the person you're disguised as, because they'll often know. You'll have the same hats and the same weapons and all that, but if they are out here and go, Oh, hey, buddy, yeah, okay, you're a sniper. Turn the corner, and there you are coming up the stairs, they're going to put two and two together and shoot you. Um, so yeah, go where your class, your disguise as, makes sense. Never run away from people. Don't shy away from things like sentries, but also don't hug up against them. Uh, and don't try to avoid things like demo man bombs. They may blow you up anyway because demo men tend to be paranoid about that or just twitchy. But don't like make a big point about trying to avoid things that would get you hurt. No, that can hunt you down. Oh, there we go. That was like a mid-air shot. It was very nice. Well, not <laughs> quite mid-air, because you can't shoot in mid-air. I showed no. that already, Rage. Jeez. Okay, okay. Learn from the person you're sitting with. No. Okay, <laughs> okay. so, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, if you can, if you're going to go spy, your best points to do it are to, if an engineer is causing your team trouble, or if a uh, heavy medic combo is causing your team trouble, because often you can backstab the medic, backstab the heavy, and continue on your way before either one even knows you're there. Um, especially good if you have multiple medic heavy combos and the medics aren't watching each other's backs, you can you can really clean up that area. But uh, getting a good spree typically will sprawl an entire level as opposed to everyone in one area, because once somebody's died there, everyone goes on alert and starts firing everywhere and shooting everything and flames going left, right, and center. And I was killed while I was lagging. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rage. Sorry, I was tempted. So yeah, Spy is one of those situations where you have to be paranoid despite the fact that you're the one causing paranoia in everyone else. It's a little weird. It's it's easy to pick up Spy and get a few lucky backstabs, but it is quite hard to actually master using a Spy. I still have not. Spies are a pain. And but they're uh, awesome. they are when you get 
a good backstab as a spy, you feel like the most awesome assassin in the world. It's amazing. But it's it's tough. You gotta watch out. Also, if you know what spies around, you gotta watch your back. No! No! Not again! Oh, also, water washes off Gerardi. So, there's that. <gasps> you in the water. Well, now you get to watch a small impromptu duel with myself and Rachel. You better not drop in my head. Better not, because that would freak me out. <gasps> Where's I coming from? And this is why Spy is fun. People you play with are terrified out of their minds that you will appear behind them. <gasps> there you are! There you are! No, why can't I shoot? Oh, also, no. the Huntsman does not work underwater. Oh. For those who did not know that. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess I'll call it there. That's about everything. Thanks for watching, folks. I really hope you enjoyed this series. Um, as more interesting co stuff comes out, like if there is at some point a lot of interesting weapons or they make some serious changes to things, I'll see about making some more videos. If you have things you want to see or strategies you don't quite understand, um, leave them in the comments. I'll see about uh, uh, showing them off with Rachel, possibly with other people. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so hope you had fun. I had fun making these. They probably and, didn't uh, have fun. Yeah, they probably didn't have fun. But I hope they may have helped you become better whatever class it is you play. Possibly spies. But probably I, I not. learned something. I learned that you can't shoot <laughs> You learned that you water. can't shoot the huntsman underwater. <laughs> Just like you can't shoot the flamethrower underwater. Or the minigun. Oh, you can't? Oh, wait. Oh, no, wait. The, mini, the minigun may want work underwater. I forget. I thought it did. Yeah, the flamethrower does not, however. Neither does the flare gun. Can you go through these windows? I'm, like, trying so hard. Ow! Yep. <laughs> Ow, no! No! Do -do -do. Okay, goodbye, everyone.